This week on The Wire, multi-generations, the new norm, borrowers return to market, and older Aussies apply for first home buyers grant. G'day guys, my name's Tim Guest, and I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the founder of Infinite Wealth, and welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate where you can get all the top stories happening this week in finance, real estate, investment, and more. Now please like, comment, and share this video, and if it's your first time tuning in, welcome along, and don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you are seeing this. Our top story for this week, multi-generations, the new norm. So increasingly, several generations of Australian families are living together under the same roof, social demographer Mark McCrindle says. And there are several reasons for the lifestyle choice. Younger generations are either leaving home later or returning back to the parental home, he says. Then, on the parents' side, they're living longer and sometimes the older parents are moving in with the middle-aged children, creating the three, or in some cases, four generations under the one roof. Now, the practice of generations Y and Z living with the family for longer periods due to affordability constraints now includes baby boomers who are sharing their household expenses with their adult children to not only save money, but to maintain their lifestyle. McCrindle says fewer than 10% of Australians now move out of their home into retirement homes. Having, severing general, uh, having, excuse me, having several generations sharing the running costs of the home creates a win-win situation because each party is paying less than they would if they were running their own rental, he says. Now, I'm personally, I'm not all that excited about living with family, but I guess there can be some great benefits. And now for our next story. So borrowers return to market. So mortgage lending rose in every major state during the last quarter of 2019, and mortgage brokers attribute the increase to easier lending conditions and renewed buyer confidence. Brokers say they processed over 15 billion in home loan applications during the quarter, which is almost 20% more than for the same period in 2018. David Bailey, chief executive of Australian Finance Group, says interest rate cuts and easing of uh, rate buffers, which check borrowers' capacity to make repayments if interest rates rise, have encouraged borrowers back into the market. Now, the federal election result and the removal of threats to changes in negative gearing for property investors have also in helped, prove market, uh, helped improve market sentiment. Non-major bank uh, lenders were responsible for almost half of the home loan applications, which is the highest since 2007. Now, the average mortgage size has also increased in the final quarter of 2019 and is now $539,000 compared to $508,000 for the same period in 2018. Let's move on to our final story. Older Aussies apply for First Home Buyers Grant. So the National Housing, Finance and Investment Corporation has given first home buyers an insight into who is applying for the federal government's new First Home Loan Deposit Scheme. Many of those applying are single and are aged over 35, with new figures showing the first 3,000 applicants, a quarter are aged 35 or older, and some are aged in their 40s and 50s. Now, the vast majority of applicants are single, which is 60% of the applications. Now, many have incomes that fall well below the thresholds, giving those on lower incomes hope for getting into their first property. Now, Chief Executive Officer Nathan Dow Bond says the average income for applicants with pre-approvals is well below the threshold for both singles and couples, allowing those on a modest income to buy their first home. So far, the median taxable income is about $68,000 for single and $108,000 for couples. And this is well below the selection criteria, which dictates that individual applicants cannot have a taxable income of more than $125,000 and couples cannot be earning more than $200,000. Well guys, that's the top stories for this week. Now remember to like, comment and share this video and of course don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Also don't forget to stay tuned later in the week for our next Just Ask Tim video series. And if you want to submit a question or there's a topic that you would like me to discuss in more detail, there is a link in the post to do that. Apart from that guys, have a great week and remember there is only one thing in life that makes a difference and that's action. See ya.